Welcome to uh, getting a little deeper uh, into the details on partnership, digital, and economic development. Christina has about 10 more minutes to brief you on some more of the detail uh, from Waterfront Toronto's work. So as soon as uh, Christina is done, um, we will move into uh, some small table and then full room discussion. Christina. Hello again, and thank you, Nicole. So uh, we're just going to pull this up here. Great. So in this room, we are going to look at three relatively related topics uh, that all touch on the project. One is around the economic development outcomes, enabling a responsible digital environment, and then partnership considerations. So hopefully you are in the right room. Uh, somehow or another, we have the wrong slide deck, though. Oh, I'm not seeing it on the comfort monitor? There we go. Well, we'll just go this way. Okay, so in the Keyside RFP, uh, one of the things that we were trying to do is build on Waterfront Toronto's past successes in terms of helping to grow an economic cluster in the East Bayfront area. We've always, as part of our mandate, had an uh, opportunity to help deliver key economic and social benefits through our projects. We were looking at an opportunity here to create uh, opportunities for investment, jobs, and talent that would be putting Toronto in the midst of the top tier global cities. We had always uh, pursued a, there we go, an intelligent community program here at the waterfront where we focused on next generation technology and creating enabling infrastructure to draw the types of jobs and companies to the waterfront that would help us to complete that vision. With Keyside, we saw a unique opportunity to leverage this project to establish Toronto as a hub for urban innovation. And we looked at how this could align with creating clusters of high potential. So we looked for the in an innovation and funding partner that could help us with these economic development objectives and prove, provide a testbed opportunity for Canadian companies and industry and academic partnerships to help overcome the barriers that they had to commercialization and going to scale. In evaluating the solutions that Sidewalk Labs put forward in the Master Innovation and Development Plan, we looked at how well the solutions achieved our priority objective of job creation and the potential to catalyze an urban innovation industry. We feel that the proposal contains well-developed strategies to catalyze the urban innovation industry within Toronto and more specifically the building technologies, tall timber, new mobility, and sustainable technology sectors. This is what will present the most significant opportunity for wealth creation overall the urban innovation market, just for a way of reference, is projected to be over $2 trillion by 2025. Just to recap some of the things that we've heard from our previous public consultation sessions, I won't go through all of these in detail, but there's been both support and some concerns that have been raised. There's generally been strong support for the economic development opportunity in terms of job creation and the opportunities that this can bring for Canadian companies to actually participate in the project. There have been concerns that have been raised in terms of the digital governance controls and ensuring that Waterfront Toronto and governments lead any and all privacy and digital governance matters. And there's also been some concerns expressed around a lack of trust in the partner and skepticism around their claims and motives behind their investments. So we'll deal with each of those as we move through. From an economic development perspective, there were 25 proposals contained in the Master Innovation and Development Plan. Of those, Waterfront Toronto was supportive of all 25. In here, you'll see that there are five solutions that Waterfront Toronto would support and advocate potentially for government funding. A lot of those deal with the tall timber proposal. There's one solution that Waterfront Toronto would support and advocate for policy change or regulatory reform. And that really relates to the koala mounts, which also appear in the digital proposal too. That doesn't have to do with the digital technology elements. It has to actually do with how you attach things to hydro and utility poles and some of the regulations that may need to change for that piece. The haloed areas with, uh, that are around the circles indicate that those may be digitally enabled solutions that would actually be subject to some further scrutiny through our digital strategy advisory panel, as well as through our uh, intelligent community guidelines and our digital principles. One thing to caveat is as this proposal has continued to evolve and the evaluation assessed the economic development potential of the proposals contained in the MIDP, this is an area where we believe that we'll need to do further analysis as the project program becomes more defined. The evaluation committee from Waterfront Toronto also uh, recommended similar type of work. This includes looking not just at job creation, but both job and wealth, wealth creation, doing a comprehensive ecosystem assessment on the basis of what proposals will be moving forward, 
and looking at the economic impact of the project as it would be defined throughout the negotiations process rather than simply on the broad scale of what was proposed in the MIDP. We also noted that there needs to be ongoing monitoring of the effectiveness should the project proceed to implementation to ensure that those economic development objectives are being achieved. So just to give you an example of one of the ones that we uh, supported and would advocate for government funding, this looks at the mass timber buildings, modular construction and factory proposal put forward. There is a, a contribution that is proposed from Sidewalk Labs or an investment of $80 million in a tall timber factory based in Ontario that would leverage Keyside essentially as the first customer to grow a whole new sector and a whole new cluster around tall timber in Ontario. On digital, there was 15 dots that are here that represent 15 solutions that enable responsible digital environments. Um, this does not relate to the digitally enabled solutions that deal with each of the solution areas like mobility and sustainability and complete communities. Those digitally enabled solutions are being dealt with in those breakout rooms if there was some that you wanted to go and explore more fully in the second rotation. Sidewalk Labs put forward a robust set of internal accountability measures. These are essentially enabling digital. While these are not governance uh, per se, they are internal accountability measures. We felt that these strongly position water for our Sidewalk Labs to be able to deliver on the governance issues that we've identified through both the principles and the guidelines. There would be a use of common published standards for both technology and data to catalyze multi-stakeholder innovation, as well as their own responsible data use guidelines and responsible data use assessment that would not replace things like a traditional privacy impact assessment, but would allow them to have that information readily available to be able to complete those more standardized uh, documents. In terms of a digitally enabled solution, the example that we've provided here is the automated schedulers that looks at how you can actually use technology to manage your, your utilities so that you are using things in an off-peak, off-high kind of uh, pricing energy cycle. So it would change perhaps when your dishwasher ran, your washer and dryer, set your heating and cooling to different systems so that I, you have a more affordable hydro bill at the end of the month. The Koala mounts, these are again, a standardized mounting device that provide both connectivity and power. They are intended to reduce the amount of time and effort that you can use to reploy, deploy, maintain and remove different fixtures, whether those be sensors, lights, posters and, and different sort of decorations for festivals. But it really helps alleviate that pressure of having to close the roads down bring in the cherry picker and have that sort of, um, out of out of commission for a period of time. So with regards to our evaluation, I do want to reinforce though that, that this evaluation and the conclusions we reached within it does not mean that we've approved moving ahead with the project or the partnership with Sidewalk Labs. It does mean that we see merit in including these solutions in the draft innovation plan for Keyside, but feedback from this round of consultation is very helpful in, in determining whether or not that those are accurate assumptions that we are moving forward with. In terms of partnership considerations, there were four key areas that we evaluated Sidewalk Labs in with regards to how we have experienced working with them over the course of the past two and a half years. The first is the organizational capacity and capabilities, including the access to their talent and expertise, new methodologies, new tools and new knowledge. The partner experience, so what was the ease and speed of decision making? How consistent were they on delivering on their promises? How reliable were they? The third deals with financial performance, both in terms of the access to new funding and revenue opportunities, but also the administrative cost and time burden to Waterfront Toronto to manage that relationship. And the fourth is public impact, both public perception of the partner and also the broad public benefits that are, could be achieved through the project. In addition to those metrics, we also did formal due diligence on the partner in three separate occasions. Uh, so this is traditional legal and commercial due diligence work. We did it once when we selected Sidewalk Labs as our innovation and funding partner, again during the framework agreement uh, process, and then prior to executing the plan development agreement. So this looks at the team composition and capabilities, the financial strength, corporate structure, and any outstanding litigation. And if we decide, if there's a decision to, to move forward with the project, prior to any implementation agreements being signed, there'll be another phase of due diligence work conducted. In terms of risk mitigation, even if we've evaluated the partner, we know it's important to mitigate any of the risk should this project move to the implementation stage. And an example of some of the things that we're thinking about right now around risk mitigation are looking at how we define and share liability, so having a clear definition of roles, responsibility, and accountability, looking at how we manage performance shortfall or default, so having audit rights, and in this case, because of the nature of the project, 
audit both financial but also technically, and having backstop and contractual requirements, so appropriate financial security, step-in provisions, and so on to make sure that even if some of those innovations fail, there's a way to make sure that the neighborhood continues to function. Again, as I said at the plenary session, there may be additional risk mitigation procedures put in place depending on the outcome of the preliminary human rights impact assessment. And just to level set, and I won't go through this in great detail, but in October, there were a number of commitments that were made with regards to digital governance and privacy that are important to keep in mind. Sidewalk Labs will uh, comply with all existing and future legislation, regulations, policy frameworks, as well as our digital principles and emerging intelligent community guidelines that were developed through consultation. Um, personal data collected will be stored in Canada. There will be a commitment to make sure that digitally enabled solutions do not impede fundamental freedoms and where possible will foster accessibility, public engagement and participation in Keyside. Waterfront Toronto will be the project lead and interface with governments on all digital governance and pri privacy related matters. Further public consultation for any sort of digital solutions that may come forward, particularly focused on marginalized groups that may be impacted by that technology. There may be a further public process and official government approval that may need to happen depending on what the technology is and where it would be deployed. And I would just point to the digital principles. There are copies of them available at the registration desk if you're interested in seeing how those have been structured. A um, couple of things just to point out there though is around the opportunity to have equitable access to technology as well as the fact that you know having uh, visibility and understanding how your data is being collected and used and ensuring an organization is being held accountable for that collection and use of the technology is important and having strong privacy protections in place at all times including de-identification of personal data at source is absolutely critical. We also established some um, guidelines with regards to intellectual property through the October 31st threshold issues resolution, one of which was securing a global patent pledge for, for Canadian innovators to have the right to use Sidewalk Labs as Canadian and foreign patents without fear of patent assertion. So Canadian companies can develop on top of the ideas that Sidewalk Labs brings to market. There's a revenue share for products and services that are piloted in the Waterfront Toronto testbed environment so that the public sector's contributions to this project are actually being recognized financially and can be reinvested into future phases and future projects of revitalization. We've also confirmed Waterfront Toronto's licensing rights to site-specific IP that's been developed through this project. The last two and a half years has yielded a lot of strong work product and we needed to make sure that with or without Sidewalk Labs we'd be able to actually leverage that work. And in addition, it's worth noting some of the other commitments Waterfront Toronto is now working on to make sure that Canadian companies have the freedom to operate so they can grow and prosper. One is digging into that global patent pledge and focusing on the non-assert provisions to make sure that Canadian companies can scale and compete globally. The other is looking at procurement mechanisms to make sure that Canadian companies have access to a fair and transparent procurement process for the project. And also working with governments, stakeholders and standard setting bodies on data and IP related issues so that we can learn from a much broader voice of audiences. And I will hand it back to Nicole. Thank you. Thanks, Christina. Um, what? So um, we're gonna move to some small table discussion for at least a good 20 minutes. Um, you've each got a, if maybe the facilitators put your hand up, straight up. Is there a table that doesn't have a, now put you down. Is there a table that doesn't have a facilitator? Okay, you got to join somebody else. All right. There's lots of play, there's lots of chairs up here. Um, so these questions are the ones that are in each of the breakout rooms. They're more or less the same, and they're, uh, the, the, there's some similarity to what you've got in your overview document, but they really focus on the um, economic innovations, where in this room we want to go more broadly to the digital piece and the partnership piece. So what I suggest you do is take a quick scan together at the table under the leadership of your facilitator, the five questions that are actually attached to your agenda, See if any of those work for you. If they don't, go with whatever does work with you, okay? So just take a quick look at those five. Some of them talk about do the innovations raise the bar? Do we have enough risk mitigation in place? This morning, I'd say half the room went their own direction and that was no problem. Good, we'll check back with you in 20 minutes. The importance of this is that you get a flavor of what the kinds of things are that were discussed at other tables. It will be super fast and we will do it again with the next group that comes in here. But if you don't mind just taking a pause on your discussion so that we can hear from these folks, I've told them where there's some common ground, flag it. 
If there are some differences of opinion, let us know, but give us the one or two top points from your table. We'll be super quick. Go ahead. Great, so at our table we had a really interesting discussion. Um, one of the main themes that came up was definitely around the partnership with Sidewalk and with privacy. Um, there were some concerns about whether the levels of government that are operating have adequate um, privacy controls and legislation um, available right now and how what that horizon looks like, what it'll take for the government to catch up on that front. Um, and there was also just broader concerns about having a private company have control over so much land and data. Um, there was a lot of concerns around that as well. Um, in terms of kind of opportunity, there was a lot of conversation about having a strong Canadian role in the project economically, so in terms of businesses and opportunities, um, and that there's an, another risk with not going forward with this because Toronto would be able to kind of set the stage for smart cities and the sort of development and if we pass up on it, will other places in the world get to have a bigger say in what the future of cities looks like? Great, right, next one. So we had a very well-informed conversation and something we spoke about was that the information that we've been provided is very high level but at the same time it's also quite vague about the innovations that are currently being um, discussed and the progress that's occurring on data. So um, our group wanted more disclosure about the projects and also how our data is being used. Um, and there was also significant discomfort with the data collection. So there needs to be a reworking of our own, the language that's used. So what is consent and what is informed consent was something that we spoke about a lot. Okay, so we had a good conversation. Uh, it was mostly, or we focused on how that is gonna be used. So for the public good or to generate uh, ven um, venue. Also uh, risk mitigations and how the project can be implemented across Canada. Uh, thanks. We had we had a, a great discussion as well. I would say the the, the vibe at our table was uh, I would say net positive for sure. Um, I think this sense was, um, you know, an appetite for experimentation provided the right safeguards are in place, and really a, a lens to thinking about kind of the, the longer term benefits. So, so where's some of the economic advantage that can come to Toronto through the, the export of some of the innovations? I think the, the training and apprenticeships was a piece. Um, looking at the Barcelona as a case study was referenced where they, they had to sort of experiment to see, um, you know, what some urban development um, what better urban development could look like. I, I would say there was, a, there was a strong sort of counterpoint view. Um, and I think just to sum it up, to some extent, it's, it's sort of the, the Trojan horse concern uh, about, about Google as, as the counterparty. We also had a fantastic discussion. Uh, broad strokes, people were generally supportive of the broad concepts. That was certainly underpinned with a concern that Waterfront Toronto gets this right and a whole lot of questions that ranged all the way from the quality of mass timber to indigenous consultation to better clarity around IP and data ownership. That really led to a conversation about the way information is presented to the public and the need to present it in a way that the public can easily consume. So one of the key suggestions that was brought forward was look at each of the innovations and outline for each of them who brought the idea forward, Sidewalk Labs or Waterfront Toronto, who ultimately owns that idea in order to execute that process or that innovation is data collected, if so, what data is collected, how is that used, and who ultimately owns the data so that people can actually start making informed decisions, uh, innovation by innovation. Uh, so in our group, we talked a lot about, um, because there's so much money up for innovation, just to be a little bit more clear um, uh, about how, um, why those certain amounts of money are, are being chosen and where they're going, and also to be more intentional with how that money is spent. Um, is spent as well as um, any any funding models used. They should look at the existing cities, the existing entities in the city, and so the lessons learned there. So looking to lessons learned, say from Mars, without um, instead of starting from scratch. Um, we also um, again there's support for the sort of like big thinking with the with the understanding that Toronto and Canada are generally risk averse, um, and that this was a good project to sort of test us on that. Um, and then overall, we did mention, we did question um, the Waterfront Toronto objectives in the first place. Uh, so are they even adequate in order to uh, evaluate a project such as this? And it's not so much how should we do this, but whether we should do it at all. 
So at our table, we didn't really have a conversation about whether they support or are against the project or process. Most of the conversation was about um, surrounded data and privacy and concerns about identifiable data and, how, and privacy and ensuring that um, citizens are still left anonymous. Um, there were also questions about or around um, who will oversee and enforce the controls and monitor the data collection aspect um, and ownership of data as well. And there was just a general comment about just more clarity is needed to better understand the process and the project overall because so far it's been a bit vague for them. Distilling our discussion down to three points, there was some concern about the uncertainty about Sidewalk Lab's business model and tied into that was the transparency around money and also a lot of concern about sidewalks, Sidewalk Labs if they're not um, leveraging personal information for profit, how are they going to make money? Um, all right, very briefly, um, our group uh, looked at urban challenges, trying to define them, and we found that they weren't clearly defined, and the proposed solutions are somewhat biased. Um, there was a, su a suggestion of uncoupling property from land, for example, and that might lead to the transformation that's needed. Um, and the proposed solutions here are not seen as transformative. Uh, there is also mention of government accountability. How do we hold governments accountable? What's the responsibility in the process? And is it uh, transparent? And what are the consequences for their inaction? Uh, so at my table, there was a lot of the issues that have already been flagged. Uh, but in addition, we talked about uh, tenants and commercial residential mix of the project and whether or not it's an appropriate mix given um, Google's not being a lead tenant in that space. Uh, and then concerns about whether or not this is a community, a community that's going to be vibrant if it's m majority uh, residential and not so much commercial. And then the second main point was uh, that digital government Digital governance needs to uh, include a wider mix of residents to give a proper assessment of the topic and that uh, it requires a more uh, equipped government and an agile government to be able to deal with the issues that are likely to arise. Two main points from our group. So firstly, uh, there's a point made around the ideas presented in the plan and it being full of incremental solutions, but the sum of those incremental solutions being uh, a potential for something big or exciting. Um, and then secondly, there was um, something about the lack of clarity around the information sharing. Um, there's a really big desire for the rationale for why a project or so why a solution was approved or rejected to be shared with the public. Uh, to the facilitators as well as all of you. Um, what we're going to do is um, move to the next room, but I do have to just flag the difference a little bit in the uh, themes that have emerged compared to, for example, the conversation this morning. I think um, it's what's new, uh, I mean, of course, there's a lot of overlap, um, but what's new is uh, the specificity around the degree of control wanted over digital and data. It came up this morning, but not quite as loudly as you've said here. Um, and uh, the focus on the role of Canadian corporations and the benefit locally also um, is consistent, but it's reinforced by what you've said. Um, and the whole notion on the specifics on the financial story, um, the motivation from Sidewalk Labs, what's the amount from the government and transparency around the, the financial story, um, uh, I think has come out a little bit more strongly than it did uh, this morning, this whole notion about um, whether you do it versus how you do it, I think is an important flag. It's also something we heard this morning. So we are gonna work very hard to, every single one of these people is writing up the notes from your discussion. We will integrate it uh, as a result of the discussion in this room. We'll do that again in the next rotation. And then I will also report back to the full room at the end on uh, the themes between the rooms. So thank you very much. Just as a reminder for your next room, uh, Complete, if you wanna move, if you wanna stay, no problem. Some of you were here this morning too, no problem. Um, I think it's great. Uh, next door, complete communities. Just at the end of the hall here, sustainability, past the registration table, mobility. Thank you very much. Thank you.